It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Lions and the Buccaneers coming up next. Still a bit warm here in Florida, but really all things considered, a wonderful fall afternoon for football here in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Detroit Lions taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, the vibe, a different one here in Tampa this year. This is year 1AB after Brady. What can they do to help soften the blow? I would say try and lean on the defense a little bit more. I think they'll play a lot better in 2023. We know how exotic they can be with how they get after the quarterback. Make sure they slow people down running the ball as well. Give this offense a chance to grow because they are under new management. But meanwhile, for the visiting Lions, they're going to be a pretty trendy sleeper pick. I feel obligated contractually to mention that they've only won one playoff game since 1957, and that number gets more and more impossible every year. But finally, Charles Davis, can they break the string in 2023? Break it, snap it, cut it, whatever you want to use. This Lions team, I fully expect to be in the playoffs in 2023. I like the way that they're being built. The ball on the team, we're set for football. And off we go from Tampa. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And look at this, right away a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Mayfield going to the air right away. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. And partner, to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. So line of scrimmage still to 39 on second and 10. Mayfield on play action. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That one a gain of 20 and a first down. They run for the first time here with Rashad White. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Jack Campbell, a first-round pick there on the tackle. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, they'll run with White. He will push his way down to about the 14. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Here's Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. 
How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? Here's White. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Rashad White, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers are on the board first here this afternoon. So a good job there, Charles, taking advantage of the short field, and they score first, punching it in on the short touchdown run. I love the theme there, right? They didn't have to do anything big on that drive. Took advantage of where they were on the field, took it downfield, put the ball in the end zone. The only thing big on that drive, the six on the scoreboard. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Here comes Khalif Raymond from his end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 18. They'll try and start this drive in the air and that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Now a second and two. St. Brown in motion right. Goff now to throw. He'll go right back to St. Brown. And St. Brown going to have the Lions first down as he'll get this up to the 32. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So we just called his name on the previous snap, and they go right back to him, Charles, for a second consecutive completion. Yeah, I think what we're discovering on this drive is that he feels like he has answers no matter what defense you throw up there. He reads it, finds the open spot, and is available for the completion. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Someone's looking fresh, and this old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Nice early burst, nice gain, too. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and a couple. Here's the 12th overall pick in April's trap, Jameer Gibbs. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Back to Montgomery on second down. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. They fall up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is not get on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Throwing on third, golf. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, 
When guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them. And a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. It'll be a gain of five, and that will bring up second down. That was a lightning fast decision that time. He just caught it and got rid of it. Because he saw his guy was going to be open immediately. So he took the R, the run, out of the play. He took the O, the option, out of the play and immediately got to the pass. To throw on second down is gone. Open man right side is St. Brown. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day back to montgomery on second down still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard game brings up a third down it outside but no success yeah sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot and trying to get it outside the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down Patterson's kick is good and they are on the board but still trailing it's seven to three so both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up. Now Mayfield lost the football. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense got it, they were already within a shadow of the goalposts. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second in a country mile. Mayfield looks to throw. It's caught by Mike Evans. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. 
Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This is White on the screen. And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Lions will take over. So first and 10 now from the 30. And they start things off with a carry by Gibbs here. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. There was a little space there, yes, but that was a well-executed run by the rookie. It was, and he wasn't one of the higher-rated rookie running backs coming out. He's probably on the next tier. But let me tell you something. If he becomes more consistent and continues to have that drive to be one of the best, we'll see more of that in the future. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and six. They'll fake the give. Now gone. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. But prior to that, he had hit his first six passes to start the game. So on a nice little run to begin. It feels like this offense has carried its dress rehearsal into the game. You know, because you do practice it. You do go through it. And in this case, it is clicking exactly like they drew it up. From the 50, it's gone. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 40. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Did you see that route the way that I did? Yep. I thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy. It came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Play action. Here's Goff. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it. And the Buccaneers are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Well, time to get another look at this Buccaneer offense. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll start here with a handoff to White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's Aiden Hutchinson. He was determined to blow that play up, but he sure did. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great. Because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. They keep it on the ground. White again. And it'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After 1-7-3, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up.
to throw Mayfield. And he is caught. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Mayfield on first down. Look at Mike Evans way again, and he's got another one. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Two yards to go, second down. They'll go up the middle with White. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A quality pickup from White, who really earned more time as the Bucks starter in the back half of last season. Finished with close to 400 yards in the Bucks' final eight games. Positioned himself as the leader in the backfield moving forward. They go right back to White here on first down. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second down and six. Now Mayfield. He completes it to Evans. And it's going to be another first down as so they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 13-yard line. A gain of 18 and a new set of downs. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Otten brings it in over the middle. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Cade Otten from 13 yard town. And the Buccaneers are able to add on to that lead. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football and for good reason. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive goes eight plays. And Kate Otten capped things off with a touchdown grab. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here come the Lions now. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And it's second down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side of the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Here's Goff. A quick throw there is incomplete. 
The intended receiver, Josh Reynolds. And it'll bring up third down. set of downs started. They need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Third and long. You knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. Back deep for the Bucs is Devin Tompkins. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Baker Mayfield going to lead his offense back out there. He had the touchdown pass last time they had it. And they'll start here with a first and ten. Starts with a run by White. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. They go play action. Mayfield. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. The result, only four yards there on the play. And now it's third and three. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. Partner, that's another short run there, and I think the easy thing is to look at him right now and say, let's get away from him entirely. Let's start throwing the football. But I don't think you ever entirely abandon the run. It helps set a tone for the game for you, keeps your offensive linemen feeling good about themselves, and it actually tamps down a defense's pressure because if you just throw it all the time, it's going to tee off with the pass rush. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Golf in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 19 yard line. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that hole right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, My bad. We simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. This is second and eight. Now it's gone. And that'll be caught by St. Brown. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. And off to St. Brown for the Detroit first down. Now a give running left with Montgomery. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. That was a good run. Probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? A good position to be in here, second and inches. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And he'll get it out to midfield. 
we'll say, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Well, obviously, they never want to see penalties on that defense, but this one... A little bit more significant there on the downfield pass play. And coaches preach it all the time. You can't put yourself in that kind of position if you're the defender. You've got to stay in a spot far downfield where you can play the ball. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Joe Tryon Shoyinka showcasing the pass rush. Well, on that one, they, they go with a play fake CD, but I don't think anybody really was fooled. All eyes were fixated on the quarterback, and they got him to the ground. And to run this play successfully, you've got to make sure that everyone is doing their part. You actually have to sell this play. You've got to sell the run action. Otherwise, why do you stop at the running back? You just run straight for the quarterback and put him on the ground. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Now gone. He'll find Reynolds over the middle. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Going up the gut, Montgomery. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. He really hasn't been able to get on track running the football, averaging less than four yards a carry. Yeah, I think that they're going to enjoy the film session because all the defenders are filling their proper gaps on just about every play. And you know what they always say for a defensive coach, when I click off this film, I better see 11 jerseys in the picture going after the ball carrier. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and 10. Well, that was not what you would call straight line pursuit for a middle linebacker to make this play. He's got to work his way through the clutter to get to the ball carrier on the outside, and he does exactly that. That's called avoiding the trash. And he's got his man. It's caught for a lion touchdown. David Montgomery, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Lions are back within a score. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide's a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that makes it a 14-10 ball game. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. They begin the drive on the ground. It's White. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 44 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. 
So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, Mayfield. This is caught by Evans. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. Partner, that's excellent timing right there. Breaking off the route and being able to hit it right when he stops. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Mayfield. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Mayfield to throw it. Incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Going to the air again with Mayfield. Out route, and the ball is caught by Godwin. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that's going to make it fourth down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, minicamp, and just regular season. They got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy. The other team's going to be unhappy. It's like, what do they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how do they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, no, that's you, partner. From the end zone, Goff. A little short pass here, taken in by Laporta. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. Golf. Throw to St. Brown, complete on the left side. Holding offense. Uh, he's trying to protect his quarterback's blind side. Don't Got nabbed down. for the hole. You have one job over there. Make sure that man does not get hit. So if you have to hold occasionally, do so because they don't catch all of them. This time they did. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Here comes third down and seven. Out of the gun, they'll give to Gibbs. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. They 
They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. Mayfield now from the 50. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Throwing Mayfield. He's got Otten. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. Still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've hit halftime here in Tampa with a box out in front. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a solid first half for the running back, Rashad White. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Touchdown is the difference. 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And the Lions getting set to go on offense to start the third. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. And Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? Well, paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks, I just say you continue to play your game throw the ball they had success doing it in the first half so make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers a little bit more to the perimeter perhaps but above all play your game on first down golf he's got it complete to gibbs and he'll be taken down right there at the 38 first down yardage on the first play of the drive give him 14. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected. 
But this is a good pickup here for the first down. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. The Goff's throw into the hands of Reynolds here. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Goff now looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 39. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Again, this is Montgomery. Down to about the 37. Here's a second and eight. Here's Goff. He'll find Williams on the slant. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 22-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's 4 for 4 now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Off play action. Here's Golf. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Joe Tryon able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. And off comes to Montgomery. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there and swallow you all in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. And he is caught, and he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's a big gainer on that play, and from experience, I can tell you, that's where defensive backs will come into the huddle and say, guys, how about some pass rush? But you're going to say it nicely, because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. Three yards is the game that time. Second and goal. Montgomery back to the ground. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Now Goff on third and goal. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this
this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. Patterson's kick is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start the drive with a give to White. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so they can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. On second down, they'll run with White. Powering forward. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? Meanwhile, Mayfield slow on target to Godwin here. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Mayfield on play action. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Here's second and ten. They run straight ahead here with White. And he's got some space here. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these big runs that we're seeing, they don't result without everyone else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter has to take place downfield, too. Yeah, he's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. They stay on the ground with White. And here he'll get it down to the seven. 94 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. They'll try to throw here, Mayfield. This is caught. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal.
Now Mayfield. Rashad White, he scored on the ground and through the air. And they are able to add on to their advantage. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is lets you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big time drive in that situation. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. And Detroit getting set to go now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. But they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get him much at all. No, not at all. That leaves him with third long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw is gone. Takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And he'll take it just outside the 40. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. They run. Montgomery. He'll get this to about the 38. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. Here's second and seven. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here comes third and about a foot. Gone. Defense, they came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and 
none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here comes the Lions punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Well, Rashad White and the rest of this Tampa Bay offense going back to work now. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone. And now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And again, that second score here in the third quarter. They start to drive with White. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Derek Barnes in on the stop. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's a toss right side with White. Five yards. Now it's third and five. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go over the century mark. Well, you got to give it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing yardage here. You're not worried about any of that. You just want to get him to the promised land for every runner. 100 yards or more in a game. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. First down, here's White. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. From the 41, here's a second and seven. They go play action, Mayfield. Now a quick throw there, but it's gonna be incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And that'll make it third down. Mayfield down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 36. That third down conversion, good for 23. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? At this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think you continue to do so. Now back to the ground game with White. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 122 yards rushing for him now as he's done it on 19 carries. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Rashad White. 16-yard touchdown. And the Buccaneers have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. 
Well, I've heard you use the term put away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs. And if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it was all finished off by a touchdown catch from Rashad White. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Off in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Now second and seven from the 23. Now it's Goff. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 30. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Quick throw complete to Reynolds. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. Was that a design pass, or what was that? It was built into the play call. He had the opportunity to either hand it inside, keep it himself to run it, or do what he just did. Throw that pass inside, hitting a receiver on the run. They'll fake the handoff. Now Goff. Now he's got it. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped at the one. 23 yards on the play. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches. You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going again. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. David Montgomery with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Lions have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, 
and they've got a puncher's chance. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Offense heading back out, and with them comes Rashad White. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Now a run on first down is not going to get off the ground as they will get him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, he might reduce it. Might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame him? And now Mayfield on the bootleg. But looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Now a give up the middle. This is White, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula, just keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Oh, that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage, the stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. A gain of three, second down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Well, this drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. 
They keep it on the ground, wide again. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Like any team, they would have loved to have had more yards on that run, but it looks like they just want to get to the two-minute warning and see what they want to do after that. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. This is caught by Evans. Touchdown, Mike Evans. 26 yards. And the Bucs have opened up a three-score lead as they pull away here in the fourth. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I think you're exactly right. You can see them sag on their sideline, and I think this one might just be over. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. On first down, it's gone. He's going to let it fly. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Looks like they're going to keep throwing to the bitter end. This one's long since over, but give them credit. They're going to go down fighting. That one, incomplete. Now a second and 10. Now gone. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Goff now to throw. He's got a man complete. Still going. Touchdown, Detroit. Jamison Williams, 74 yards. And the Lions are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. You got to understand situational football because they're playing with the lead here late in the ball game. So the back defender has got to be as deep as the deepest receiver. Keep everything in front of you. Rally up and make the play. Yeah, you would think they had the three score lead. Now it's down to two, but three score lead here late that they wouldn't give up a big pass play like that, but they did. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. 
And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Try to pick this up on the ground with White. And the Lions quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth throwing Mayfield he finds his man that's hot in the tight end and he is going to have a Bucks first down all smiles on that sideline that should be the one to do it now all through this one they've had nothing but success throwing the football and in the passing game here we are in the fourth quarter a time you'd think they'd be running the football they're still tossing it around and having great success and it appears a whole lot of fun as well so he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory.